Hi, this is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek, and I've got a review today. And as you can see, we've got robots behind us because we're going to be talking about automation, automation for theatrical exhibition. And recently, a friend of mine wanted to update a lot of his screens to a more modern automation device. Um, he had a device which was going through a computer and USB port, and he wanted to make it more um, universally been able to use by a web-based uh, control device. There have been web-based control devices around previously, but they were quite expensive, and there has been a number of uh, cheaper units that have come available, and recently this one has come available, and it is a very good value device because it has web, it has a web interface, as well as just a socket-based interface. Now, if we go down to the camera now, you'll see that um, I've got this KMtronic. This is the unit I'm talking about. Um, it is um, basically got the eight outputs here. I've uh, got lights to show when they're on and off. Now, we have another unit here that we, we have been using in the past called the RLY8. It's very similar. It's actually very cheap, but it doesn't have a web interface. And then they have never updated to have one. But um, if you do want one, for not a lot more, you can get this unit here. Uh, and this, so I've, this is quite new, so I was testing it for, for a friend of mine. And I was very pleased with this performance. And other things I really like about it is that all the inputs are detachable. So you can wire up your input and outputs uh, on a table without having to do it in the rack, which is quite nice if you need to, um, which makes it a lot easier. And, and uh, the normally open, normally closed, they're all together. So each one can represent an input or a, a control like a light or going to flat scope. Um, sort of functionality. Also, I like it this way because um, I prefer these attached power connectors. Like if you've got like this one here, you can see it's just a barrel plug. Very easy to just to pull out, pull out. Um, so I'm a big fan of anything that attaches more directly like that. Um, so let's let's quickly go. The first thing you want to do with one of these sort of things is to look for the manual. So if you just do a quick look for KMtronic Web Relay, you should come up with this. Um, and it comes up uh, at, usually at the top of the search. And you've got the picture of the unit and it's quite a good manual, goes through everything it does. And uh, you know, some of these things don't have manuals at all. So you know, there you go, this is, this is doing quite well in terms of being able to, that's, that's an image of, the, of what it looks like in the web page, configuration page. And specifically, I'll go through those a bit later, but specifically this is how you control it as basically a web device. So as a web relay, anything that can talk HTTP can talk to this device. And basically, if you add the, onto the end of the address, any of these commands, these are what will happen, right? So just, just have a, just an example of that. We're going to do that now. So here's a, you know, just a, a Linux login on this machine. And I'm going to use the curl command to tell it to turn um, pin one on. There you go. And it responds with um, uh, a basic information about what's happening. Status one, pin one is on, and the rest are currently off. And the relay names are here, right? And I can turn it on, off again by sending zero. And now it's off. Very easily, easy. Anything that can do a web command a web HTTP get command can control this unit. So, you know, very easy to use. Now, um, just so we'll go over it, we'll, we'll go through a demonstration of using it on a uh, IMS 2000, for example, a Dolby IMS 2000. So I've got two commands here, which I've dummied up. Uh, Red Relay 1, so this is going to emulate a HTTP request to the unit. And you can see it going down there now and that was a one second delay. But due to the way that it talks, it's a little bit slower. Um, it also does UDP, which is a very important. So the unit you can, the newer version, you can turn on UDP and you can see it's more efficient, works much faster. Um, and we'll just have a look at how we program that now. So if we look at the, the HTTP, the, the socket version first, where we emulate a HTTP request, right? So really what you're doing is you're saying, basically when a HTTP request goes, this is the smallest and simplest way to represent that request. And um, basically we're gonna get slash FF0101, which is race basically what I did with the curl command. And then you've got to put uh, HTTP slash 1.1, return, return on the end, and then wait. That slash W is a special wait command to allow the command to complete 
and that's to a degree why it's a bit slow when you do it this way but it's just a limitation with doing http requests in uh, on the dolby um, some don't need this you really have to see on the unit that, that you've got the player that you've got or whatever you're trying to control this with uh, you may need to put a weight on there if it disconnects too quickly sometimes the commands don't go through um, um, so then it's a one second delay and then there's to send it the off with the zero zero command and that results in uh, obviously um, this type of delay um, but if we go back to um, the UDP it's much simpler um, basically you, you give it the port and you just send the FF011 to the port and it's done very simple uh, basically similar to the HTTP but you're just sending the just the, the command that you need all right so if we have a look um, uh, at the interface now so let's jump to controlling the unit and so I'm going to type in the IP address and there we go so let me just go back to here um, so I've typed in the IP address and you can see there's flashing there you can turn them on and off you can see they're flashing if I put the other camera on so you can see my finger uh, pushing a button and the, the how fast it is very fast however there's a problem with this and I'll show you it now if we start the debugger you'll probably see here that this unit or this web page is polling the unit as fast as possible gen generating a ton of traffic and also um, causing quite a lot of load in uh, in CPU on the web browser that you're using so you do not want to leave this page open and just sitting there it just it's just a waste of traffic and a waste of the, the CPU cycles on the unit that's looking at it um, I'm hoping in the future that they may if we go to the configuration page uh, you'll see here where you can configure the names of the units the IP address DHCP um, and also this is where you can enable the UDP and the the ports that are used right I'm hoping they'll add to this so they can put for example a two second delay between um, you know the, the thing it's, it's very nice that um, that you can that it, it can poll them and it's so quick but it has a cost and you don't really need need that so for example if I'm using this and you can see it in the background now and I turn it off you can see how fast the web page um, updates in the background because it's literally holding the thing 10 15 times a second um, to tell you the truth I think it would be fine if the unit only polled every two seconds so at the very most it would be two seconds behind but it wouldn't cause any sort of you know this polling this fast is just not a viable thing to, to have sitting in the background the amount of memory and CPU uh, and traffic that it eats up doing nothing is just uh, just not viable um, it's great just for, for logging in and checking and making some changes but not for leaving loaded so um, but yes very good unit very good unit highly recommended for the price um, the, the the traditional units that have been purchased um, uh, in the past like 10 years ago there was quite a well-known unit that was uh, utilized then those are fantastic units you can actually program to do anything you want they use in other industries as well um, but they've got a lot of smarts built into them and you can configure them to do anything but to a degree uh, for my opinion in terms of setting up cinemas for a lot of smaller independents etc I like to keep all the programming in one location so if you need to change it or fix it or something it's all in the one spot you don't have to go oh we have to do a change where do we do the change where's the configuration for that oh it's over on this or it's over on that no it's all on the one device so the fact that the the, the tier the the player is telling to, to go on waiting and going off it's a bit of a it's a, it's not fantastic it would be nice if you could tell it just to pulse for one second but um you know it it means that um that you're keeping the configuration and the management of that device more centralized and that's easier to maintain on the long term but anyway that's the reb relay uh what is it the um the kmt tronic or the km tronic reb relay i hope you like my review of it and um you know search for it on the web it's not hard to find anyway that's james gardner bye for now